Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be reviewing the PDP Level 40 headset for the Nintendo Switch. Now, gaming headsets weren't really too much of a thing for the Nintendo Switch, I would say before the last six months to a year, simply because most games didn't have chat features integrated to them. However, especially in the last couple of weeks with the release of Apex Legends, there are finally quite a few people, I think, scrambling to find a headset for their Nintendo Switch. And basically when you search Switch headset, one of the first results that generally comes up is the PDP branded headset for the Nintendo Switch that we have right in front of us. Now, just before we actually get to a close up, there is a small point that I wanna go over that might help some people out there. And that is just to talk about the fact that you don't actually need a Switch branded headset to work with the Nintendo Switch. They're using a unified 3.5 millimeter adapter on the Nintendo Switch, meaning that if you already own a gaming headset that's been made for a computer, for another console, it most likely will work with your Nintendo Switch and you don't need even to buy anything else. If, however, your headset has a split uh, microphone from headphone plug, well, the worst it's going to cost you is five bucks for a little unified adapter just like this. And those are available on Amazon at different tech stores. It's very easy to find normally. And even if you have a headset with a split uh, connector, look in your box. A lot of headsets have the unified adapter that comes with it. This one actually came from a, another budget headset that I purchased. The reason I explain that though is because it will come up at the end of the video that since this is a Switch branded headset, in the review section there is a specific point that I have about this headset being branded for the Switch uh, that we're going to go over, but I don't want to go into too many details because like I said, that will be more in the review section after we get through the close-up. But to close out the basic presentation of this headset, this is a budget headset, okay? Normally it's sold between $25 and $30. If you're seeing it for more than that, stay away. Like basically, we're gonna be reviewing it today as a budget headset in the 25 to $30 range. And that's pretty much where it should be considered anyway. Anyway, if you're looking for this headset, I'll be leaving affiliate links down below. I'll also be leaving links to some unified adapters uh, like the one I showed in case you do have a headset with a split connector and you need one of those, as well as I'll be leaving links to some other headsets that I'll be showing at the end of this video. Uh, as usual, however, as we go through the video, don't forget that if you do like this content and you want to see more, please do hit the like button. Really does help out a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. But now we'll switch to a close-up of the headset so we can look at the features. Then we'll do a quick mic test so you can hear what it sounds like when you're talking through this headset. And finally, we'll end with the review portion, which are my thoughts on purchasing this headset. Uh, so just stay tuned. Let's get going on the close-up. So now for the close-up, I always take a quick look at the box. Basically, very simple. You see the headset on the front. It's branded for the Switch. It also lets you know that it's compatible with the Switch Lite because the Switch Lite uses the same 3.5 millimeter jack. On the side, we get close-ups of the headset. So at the back, we get the general characteristics that PDP is trying to communicate for the headset so that it's lightweight and offers a headband cushion that basically it has breathable uh, ear over the ear cushions that offer comfort for long gameplay sessions, that it has a clear chat audio with 40 millimeter drivers for the speakers in the earphones, and lastly, a bi-directional noise canceling mic with a flip up mute function. So once we actually get in the box, this is all you have. You have this and you basically have a small little instruction manual. Now, the first thing to note about this headset, and it'll be sort of coming up in the review, the cable included is not very long. It's only about two feet long, and that's including the part that goes from the earphones itself. Normally, I would only measure from the unified connector here, but once again, um, it's only about two feet long. It is somewhat of an issue on this headset, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, if we take a look at the cushions on the ears, they are pretty decent, they are soft to the touch. However, the one thing is that the openings are quite small. I would have preferred a little bit larger openings because I, I like better earphones that cup your ears than some that basically lay on top of them. But nonetheless, the cushions actually seem pretty decent and they are pretty soft to the touch. Same thing on the headband here at the top, you have a soft cushion for the part that's going to lay against the top of your head. 
Now, if we flip them over, at the back here, you have a volume control knob. And I've got to say that after using this headset for a while, it's pretty well placed. It's easily accessible. It's behind the same ear as the microphone. So it's easy to adjust your muscle memory to know where it is if you need to put up or down the sound. Sort of if you have like a teammate that keeps screaming in your ears and you want to turn it down a bit, it's easily accessible and can be done pretty quickly. Now the last part of the close-up, let's take a look at the microphone itself. So the microphone is very flexible, so you can move the microphone around. However, when it's up like this, it is automatically muted. And when I'm saying up, I'm not talking about flexing the microphone part. Here at its base, you have to rotate the base 65 degrees, and basically then it sort of locks into place, and now the microphone will be on. Once again, it's flexible, so you can adjust the microphone to be perfectly lined up with your mouth. So that is pretty much all the functions of the PDP headset. So now we're pretty much at the sound test portion of the video. So basically, very simple how I'm gonna do this is I'm going to roll through my intro three times. Once with my Yeti Nano, once with the PDP microphone, and lastly with my G230 Logitech headset, just so we can get a comparison to another budget priced headset. Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're reviewing the level 40 wired headset for the Nintendo Switch. And this is the sound test for the Yeti Nano. Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're reviewing the PDP level 40 wired headset for the Nintendo Switch. And this is the sound test on the Logitech G230 headset. Hey everyone and welcome back. So today we're reviewing the PDP level 40 headset for your Nintendo Switch. And this is the sound test on the level 40 headset itself. So now for my thoughts on the headset. Now don't forget that this is a budget 25 to $30 headset. So I'll be reviewing it, you know, based on that price category. And the first thing comfort wise, the headset is decent. I would have liked slightly larger cups on the ears because these cups will rest on top of parts of your ear rather than around your ear. And for long play sessions, I do prefer cups that lay around the ear than on top of it because it does sometimes cause a little bit of annoyance, you know, and fatigue on your ear to have something pressing against it constantly. But overall, I can't knock it because it was decently comfortable for a headset in this price category. Like I've had headsets that are way more comfortable and I've had headsets that were a pain to wear. This one falls somewhere in the middle. It's relatively comfortable. So now next we get to how this headset actually sounds. And I mean sounds for you. Unfortunately, there's no way for me to show that to you other than you trying out the headset for yourself on your head. But I would say that this set set has pretty standard fare for this price category. It has some 40 millimeter drivers that delivers, I would say, decent sound. The most important part is it gets the job done. It's a stereo headset. And if you're playing in a competitive game and you need to know if the footsteps are coming from the right or the left, you will know in this headset. It does do a good job of delivering good stereo sound. I would just never wear this headset if you wanted to appreciate music or the soundtrack of a game, because obviously these are basic 40 millimeter drivers on the budget end of the spectrum. It delivers sound to your ears, although I wouldn't say that it is the truest sound and can't be compared to more expensive headsets like in the $100 range or above. Now we get to the microphone. So you heard for yourself during the sound test what this microphone sounds like. Once again, though, keep in mind that this is a budget headset, and that is pretty standard fare for a budget headset. That's why I compared it to my Logitech G230, because obviously if we're comparing it to my Yeti Nano, it blows it out of the water, and that is normal. This is a dedicated microphone that costs five times as much as the headset itself. So it is normal that, that microphone, those microphones don't compare. But if you compare it to something like the G230, it sounds pretty comparable. Personally, I found the sound was crisper and more precise coming from my G230 than from the PDP headset. But once again, that'll be personal preference. And in this price category, you're always going to get microphones that sound like you're far away from the microphone because they're trying to be noise canceling microphones at an ultra budget price. So unfortunately, the sort of drawback to that is that 
Even though the microphone is two inches from your mouth, it sounds like you're talking from the other side of the room. But, you know, I'm repeating once again, if you're buying a budget $30 headset, you shouldn't be expecting much more than what you're getting out of this microphone. People will understand you nonetheless. You might have to talk up if like very loud if you're in a firefight or, you know, with a lot of sound going on in game. But nonetheless, the microphone once again gets the job done at this price category. So now we get to my biggest issue with this headset. And it has to do with something I talked about in the intro. The fact that this is branded as a switch gaming headset and the fact that they only included a two foot cable with the headset, okay? Because basically, if you're branding this as a Switch headset, that means that you have some people that are gonna be picking up this headset that aren't that tech savvy, but are expecting by buying a Switch branded headset, you're getting a headset that is perfectly adapted to the reality of owning a Switch. And having only a two foot cable means that you're perfectly good to play in handheld mode. You're most likely good to play in tabletop mode. But if you're playing in dock mode on a 50 inch screen, a two foot cable is not going to cut it. And that's my issue with this headset. Now the level 40 headset is built this way because it's branded the same for the Xbox system and the PlayStation. But the thing is that both those systems offer audio pass throughs on their controllers. Something that unfortunately for the moment, almost every Nintendo Switch controller doesn't offer unless you have a wired PDP controller. That's pretty much one of the only controllers that actually offers audio pass-through because if you don't know, audio pass-through is pretty much blocked on the Bluetooth end of the controllers. Meaning that a wireless controller on the Nintendo Switch for the moment actually is going to have a huge difficulty trying to offer that option. So basically all they did was they took the basic design they already had for the level 40 headset from the PlayStation and the Xbox. They put a new coat of paint on it to make it switch colored and they basically rebranded it as a switch product. But they didn't take into account the reality of the switch being able to go into dock mode and not have an audio pass through on its controllers, which is a little bit disappointing on my end because Let's be honest, this headset is going to cater to a large audience of people that are maybe less tech savvy. They're going into the store and they want to buy a headset that they are guaranteed will work for their Switch. Or they want to offer it as a gift to someone who owns a Switch. They don't know themselves that much about the Switch and they want to make sure they're getting the best headset for that person. But when you unbox it, if you are offering this or you play yourself in dock mode mostly, a two foot cable with a 50 inch screen TV is just not going to cut it. Meaning you'll actually have to invest in an extra accessory like an extension cable for the 3.5 millimeter adapter, which a 10 foot cable will run you somewhere between five or $10. But that does mean that in the end, the headset price is jacked up from 25 to $30 to 35 to $40. And at that price point, you can get some other headsets that do offer a longer cable. And just to repeat my point, I have no problem with a budget headset offering a short cable simply because we are on the budget end of the spectrum unless they're branding it as a switch headset because as I said earlier if you're branding it as a switch headset your headset should be adapted to the reality of the switch so I don't care if you cut corners somewhere else but you offer a long cable and it's not true that it's impossible to offer at this price point because the G230 headset that I tested earlier voice wise has an eight foot cable and it is a 30 to 35 dollar headset so if there's one thing i would sort of take from the review is that if you're buying this headset just be aware that in dock mode unless you're playing like on a 24 inch screen where you have your switch set up right beside you and that isn't an issue you're most likely going to need an extension cable if you want to use this headset in dock mode and maybe a quick message to PDP if they're listening out there. If you make future editions of this headset or other headsets that you decide to brand as Switch headsets, please take into account the fact that audio pass-through is not a thing on most Switch controllers. And please include a longer cable with your headset. So that's pretty much it for my review of the Level 40 headset. 
So I'll be leaving links down below to the headset because like I said, ultimately it still is nonetheless a solid headset for the price, especially if you don't need it in dock mode or if you already own an extension cable like I did myself, that doesn't really become an issue for you. I'll also, however, be linking down below the G230 headset that I personally use, as well as the G332 headset, which is the newer edition of the G230. It's maybe $5 more, but if someone's looking for the more recent model, uh, it also offers an eight foot cable, so you won't have issues there. Now, as usual, and as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you did like the video, the best way to support the channel is to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. But as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.